Hi, and welcome back to Fire and Maneuver. In this video, I will briefly talk about the game's controls. So the first thing that you might notice is that our game is completely silent. So one of the first things I might do is adjust the volume. To do that, you're going to press Escape or click the gear icon in the top left, and we can go check out the audio. Uh, there we can adjust the music volume, which maybe like that's a good amount of volume and then sound effects as well. I think later on too, we may add a slider for voice lines if you want to adjust that as well. Uh, but for right now, it's just sound effects and music. The mixed music allows you to select if you want to hear specific tracks. So right now by default, just about everything is on. Um, but I could just make it so I hear German and French themes if I want to be immersed in maybe more of a Franco-Prussian war setting. So I can turn the rest of these off. Or, if you turn off mixed music, it will only play music of the country that you're currently playing. So mixed music is good if you like specific tracks, or if you want to pick, you know, if you've got a 2v2 with different nations, you may want to pick all the nations involved. Um, or maybe you just really enjoy, let's say, Civil War marches, maybe you just want to listen to those. But this gives you the option to listen to whatever you want in the match. In this case, I'm going to switch to German and French themes. While we're here on this options menu, let's take a look at the other options we can choose from. So general shouldn't be too relevant to us. We can choose the display window, but the region is going to determine uh, where you're playing online. Right now, that doesn't matter, obviously, because we're in a match. Uh, but you can also adjust tooltip delay, which is a new setting we just added. So if you think the tooltips take too long to appear, or they're kind of covering your mouse and, and constantly popping up too fast, you can adjust them accordingly to however you want. The next thing we'll look, out, look at is graphics. And I went, uh, went over graphics a little bit in our intro uh, tutorial video. So you can go watch that um, if you want more information about that. Um, but this shouldn't be too relevant to us. This is just going to adjust the, you know, the graphics of your game. Um, what is more relevant for this tutorial is controls. So we've got custom key binding for just about everything in the game right now. We're going to uh, keep adding more to this as well. One uh, requested control that a lot of people have been asking for, one uh, hotkey, is the ability to quickly change formations. And I'm thinking when we do that, we're just going to make them the number uh, keys. So if you press one, you might go to march column, two might be a line, and so on. Right now in this particular build that I'm showing you, it's not available, but we're going to add that very, very soon. So that's going to be, honestly, that's probably going to be a go-to of mine, because one of the first things you want to do when you start a battle is determine whether you want your guys in marching columns to get them to the front uh, the front line faster than your opponent, or to keep them in line formation. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. Otherwise, if you see anything here that you want to rebind, go ahead and do it. I know that some people in Europe or in Asia might have different keyboards that don't allow them to um, comfortably use WASD. So you can adjust that accordingly there as well. All right, so we will take off that menu. And now that brings us to the deployment phase. So if we're talking about controls here, let's talk about you know, how how do we even place units down and get this battle started? So the first thing that you're going to do to get used to these camera controls are W, A, S, and D to move the camera forward, left, back, and to the right. To lower the camera, you hold Q, and to raise the camera, you hold E. But again, you can rebind any of those controls if you don't like them. Another thing you can do is hold middle mouse button to look around, which can be quite useful. Uh, in this case, we're going to look straight down and lower our camera a bit. And if you left-click on your unit card, like so, you can right-click to put them into place, like that. So I can left-click, right-click, left-click, right-click, and so on. You can actually double up units on the same tile. So if I don't want these militiamen to be exposed, I can move them over to put them into a tile with my grenadiers. But if I don't want my grenadiers to absorb most of the damage, I can actually click in the center of this tile, like so, and that's actually going to select both of these units. So if you deselect and just grab the back, it's just going to bring the militia into selection. If you deselect and click the front, that should just bring the grenadiers into selection. If you click off, but you click right in the middle, you're going to select both, and you can actually reposition them, or you can swap the front lines. So I can look in the bottom here, and this here says cycle reserves. Reserve cycling is a maneuver order. This command changes the front line and reserve. So I can click that, and that's going to swap the militia to being in the front if I want them to absorb the damage. Um, that little tooltip there should be just about everywhere in the battle system. So if you wanted to read what these little traits do uh, attached to the unit, you can kind of hover over this and see, oh, we've got the efficiency trait. And then you can kind of hover over here and see what other traits are in the game, and then keep going down and reading about all of these. 
Um, all right, so let's deploy the rest of our forces here. We might want to put the artillery on the road, and the cavalry, we can put them on the flank. The next thing that we can do is adjust the formations of our troops. And to do that, again, we can click right in the center to select both, and use this button here, formations, to choose any of these formations that we want, and we can read about them to see what they do. In this case, um, I think in a later tutorial, I'll talk specifically about formations, when to use them, why to use them. So in this case, I'm just going to teach you how to use these, but not in this tutorial. Uh, I'm not going to talk about why you would want to use each one. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm going to deploy these guys in march column, swap them around, put the march column on the road. And then these troops will go on the side. I'll put them in march as well. And then the artillery can be in the back. And that is good enough for me. So when you're ready, you click the confirm button. There we go. Now our battle is officially started. We can go look over here at the enemy. You can hold shift to move your camera faster. So if I hold shift and move it, look how quickly I can move to the enemy position. And you can use this for Q, E, uh, W, A, S, D, anything you want to move nice and quickly. I believe we're going to add a control as well, which will be Alt, the left Alt key, which will slow the, uh, slow the camera movement down. Is that already in? I can't tell. <laughs> but either way, that should slow your camera down if you hold Alt, left Alt. Um... Another thing you can do too, that's not quite in our key binding yet, is I believe if you hold shift, you can actually mark units of interest. Shift, left click. So if I want to mark, um, all of these just look like infantry to me, but if I want to really know that this guy is dangerous, I can hold shift and click that unit to mark him off. You can also shift and right click to bring up his unit info panel and read about him. So these heavy infantry were recruited from the uh, from the best, the most disciplined troops of the French army. Okay, so that guy's a dangerous unit. If I look over here, I might see, oh, what kind of artillery is this? Oh, 12-pound artillery. And I can right-click, shift right-click it again to get rid of that panel. Okay. Um, and again, mark those units of interest. You can do that to your own troops as well. If I really want to keep track of my militia, I can mark it with a number two. And then have the enemy marked as a number one. So whatever you guys want to do, you can use that for whatever you want. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we can left-click our units, and it's automatically going to give us a preview of where they're going to move. I can see that we have got extra movement on this road. I'm going to right-click to confirm that order, and we can see our orders remaining in the bottom left go down by one because we just told our troops to move up. And if I tell this artillery to move up, we can see if that also gets written on the page too. The next thing we'll do is we'll have our column move up and the cavalry. But if you made a mistake and you think you want your cavalry to move up first, you may actually want to grab this order and then swip, switch them around. And now that order will happen first. Everything is sequential. So one, two, three, then four. To close out your order page, the hotkey for it is space. And that can close that, or you can just click on it. And we can see I've got eight orders left. Um, so these are going to be all my orders for the turn. Another thing we'll notice is on these little unit cards, you can notice these orange and blue dots. And the blue dots are how many maneuver orders that unit can do. And the orange dots are how many fire orders. If the unit is grayed out, that means you can't give it any more orders. So notice my artillery here is grayed out. That's because despite it having two fire orders left, it's got the cumbersome trait, um, which means I can only issue fire orders or maneuver orders for the turn. And because I moved, that means I can't use those orange dots. Okay. Um, in this case, though, my... Uh, cavalry could theoretically charge if it had more movement speed or if it had a carbine. And all of my infantry can still shoot, but they're in march column, so that's not going to be relevant to me because march column can't shoot. So the next thing I'll do is I'll click the envelope in the bottom right, and that's going to end my turn. And then we can see the flashing of which units are going to move first, and they're going to do a little animation to their destination. And the enemy orders are going to happen sequentially at the same time. So order one, now it's order number two. They're going to move up as my artillery moves up. And then we're going to have order three start next right there. And we can see what the enemy is doing. They're moving up two march columns to engage here. And they've actually deployed some other guys to match my cavalry on the right. And then their grenadiers are moving up in line. And then their last order is probably going to be these troops here, but we'll see. Yep. And we can actually zoom in. Now, the max amount you can zoom in is just here. But if I wanted to look at the uniforms, you can actually tap control. And that brings you into cinematic mode. And if you click the middle mouse button, that'll get rid of your mouse as well. Ignore the fact that the minimap is still in the top right. I think what we'll do in a further update is get rid of that UI as well, so that you've got no UI that you're looking at um, when you're in the cinematic mode. But now I can lower the camera even closer. So if I wanted a cool shot across these troops, I can slowly move the camera around and get a cool shot here. And then follow, let's say, this column up with a little tree <laughs> blocking their troops there. And then we can raise the camera up, and then you can notice the kind of skybox is going to go away once I bring the camera further out. So if you want a nice little overhead view, you can do that here. Or you can bring the camera down 
and then see your troops uh, close up like that. So that looks kind of cool. And if you tap it again, it's going to bring you right out of that cinematic mode. Um, I suppose the last things we can go over is shooting. I think there's actually some little tricks that I'm going to teach you guys about uh, doing your attack orders. So something that is cool is if I grab this column here, move him up on the hill, grab this one, move him up on the hill. I can then grab both of these guys because they have um, efficiency, so they get another order. I can click to change their formation, like so. There we go. And now you can see their blue dots are gone. They can't do any more movements. But I can now click on them and notice my attack orders. I can fire two tiles ahead because I'm on a hill. And if I think, so there's no one in my range right now, but if I think the enemy will move in my range, I can actually queue up an attack order, even if it's not going to go through. So watch. I'll open my orders page, click on this guy. And actually, another uh, quick trick is just to tap right-click to shoot. So I'm going to click my guy, tap right-click to shoot, and look, it just put the order down. I've got one more fire order because I've breached loaders. So I'm going to click again, and that doubles up my fire orders. I've got six orders remaining. This guy over here, I might not know who's going to move into my range. So I'm actually going to put them on fire at will. So they're going to shoot whoever moves into range. I'm just going to tap that there. And again, even if I'm out of range, those orders are going to go through if the enemy moves into the range during the turn. If they stay out of range, the orders get thrown away. But if they move closer, I get to actually use them. So there's an element of prediction that's really important. And you can use those attack orders and movement orders no matter what. Um, it's just that these orders aren't going to go through if I'm out of range. And they will go through if during the turn I do enter range. So we're going to see how this plays out. I might move up my cavalry and my other column here. And then my artillery. So let's see how that plays out. We're going to move up our infantry onto the hill. There we go. And then I'm doing my attack order. Oh, but they stayed out of range. See, yeah, the AI was smart here. Instead of running up their march columns, they knew I was in range, so they decided to get into battle lines. So that's a nice little improvement on the AI that we did. I think in the previous version, maybe even last week, they would have ran straight into me. But look, they're forming a nice little battle line. They're not entering the forest, and they've got a flanking force. So the AI is being a little bit smarter here. Um, and you can see none of those attack orders went through because the enemy didn't go into our range. But had they moved up, then those attack orders would go through. So it's all about using prediction. And there's no harm in doing those orders because we had plenty of orders left over. So if you're short on orders, maybe you don't want to do that. But if you've got plenty of orders to use, then you might as well throw in a couple attack orders. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, I think. We went over just about everything here. We moved up, we cycled reserves, we changed formation, we used fire at will. Um, one last tip is if I click on this cavalry, move them up. If you want to charge quickly, hold down right click instead of tapping it. And notice they just go right into the charge. So that queues up a charge order. And no matter where the enemy moves, they're going to try to get that charge off if they have enough movement points to follow the enemy around. Okay, so that's it for pretty much all the hotkeys and, um, and all of just the regular uh, orders that you can do. And again, if a hotkey isn't to your liking, you can go and rebind your controls. And if you've got any suggestions for us, let us know in the comments if there's any other quick, uh, quick controls that you would like to have added to the game. And that's about it, guys. Um, yeah, I hope that helps you guys with learning the controls. And we'll have more tutorials going over how to fight your first battle and go over maybe some tactics in the next um, tutorial videos as well. All right, thank you.